Hey guys, this is Paul of Emerald Enclosures here giving you a tutorial video about how to set up a fruit fly culture. I got this one here as a starter from joshusfrogs.com. I believe it was $7 for this uh, 32 ounce culture. But this one was just to help start me off. These cultures don't usually last past two weeks. So it's important for anyone who has a repetitive use for them to be able to know how to make their own. Fruit flies are, well, these particular fruit flies are Drusphila melanogaster. And through a lot of work by people, not me, they were bred so that they are flightless. Drusphila Ide, I think that's how you pronounce it, are slightly bigger than the melanocasters and are also flightless, used for feeding larger creatures. But the melanocasters are good. Just, um, I'm making these actually for both my baby jumping spiders and my dart frogs when they come in. So anyway, I'm going to go over the steps on how to actually do this. 32 ounce deli cup, same size as the ones I already have, and tops. I'm trying two different tops because I want to see which one works out better. I already have a feeling that the carbon filter is going to be working better because for these cultures, the humidity needs to stay between around 65% or higher. If they don't, they'll dry out and then the flies will start to die and the cocoons won't be able to hatch. And the, heat, um, the temperature needs to stay between 70 and 80. I believe once they go over 85 degrees Fahrenheit, they'll become sterile and over 90, they'll actually regain the ability to fly because of the proteins inside their wings unfolding, which we don't want. So wherever you keep them, keep them in a room temperature area and don't let them go much further than that or your entire culture is gonna be worthless. I'm not sure if the next generation would actually be able to fly Something is telling me no because the proteins unfolding is on a genetic level. So, I don't know, maybe I'll test that one day just to see what happens. But what you need is instant mashed potatoes, powdered sugar, brewer's yeast, and cinnamon. The mashed potatoes provides, well, it provides the majority of the entire culture itself, giving it some su um, sustenance, some space, and the fruit flies will feed off the carbohydrates. The powdered sugar, basically the same thing. The yeast provides food and it also provides protein to the flies. Now the cinnamon, the cinnamon is actually for mold reduction. That way, the cultures will be good for longer periods of time. Although they still generally last about two weeks or so. Now basically the steps that you would take to be doing this is taking 27 ounces of instant mashed potatoes. This one's a 26.7 ounce. Mixing it together with eight ounces of powdered sugar and two-thirds cup of brewer's yeast. Nothing really more past that. You just mix it all up. If you have a stir-like container, that works best because whatever you don't use, you just put it in your freezer and save it for later. Or you could do what I did and put it in a gallon bag. Now, just because it's tedious and I feel like it would have been a waste of time, plus I had some left over from my last culture I made a while back, I already have all the concoction pre-mixed everything in here but the cinnamon itself. And the cinnamon I'm going to just be sprinkling over the cultures themselves. Now what you need per culture is boiled water. I try to let this water uh, cool down a little bit because the last culture I made actually melted the bottom of these containers and I didn't want that to happen again, which I think is going to happen with a little bit anyway, but there's not really much I can do about that because if it's not hot enough, the instant mashed, mashed potatoes are not going to melt properly. Now, just 
just move this out of the way. Measuring cup. Now you don't need to fill up the entire container all the way. Even that right there is probably enough. It'll expand a little bit when you add the water. And despite the fact that I don't think I'm going to need this many fruit flies, it's best to have a backup just in case, in case a culture crashes because if it does, then all your flies are gone. You're going to need to buy more from someone. So it's best to have a backup. Plus those jumping spiders just keep eating and eating and eating, so I'm really not worried about them actually uh, going to waste. No. Hey guys, sorry about that, but my phone actually ran out of space. Again. So, I had to clear out the memory. Basically, the only thing that you missed was me adding the water to these cultures and then mixing them until the consistency came to be about mashed potatoes, I mean, which is basically what they are. Now, an important tip for this is before you actually add any sort of molten hot liquid to these things, let it cool a little bit, because if it doesn't, you're just gonna melt the entire container, which has happened to me in the past. That should do. I'm gonna try and do real quick, kind of push this down a little bit so it's a little bit more uniform throughout. I don't want the flies getting around and getting caught underneath. I mean, just because they're flies doesn't mean that I want them to die. I feel like all life should be appreciated in that sense. Okay. All right, next step, add the cinnamon. As I stated before, this is about deterring fungus growth and keeping the culture useful more for more time. Just a sprinkle. Should look approximately like that. That's enough to inhibit the mold growth. And it smells nice also. Put that to the side. And what I use instead of Excelsior, which I'm not entirely sure where if you go about getting it, it's pretty much sh um, strips of aspen pine or some other type of wood. And it's used for giving the cultures more surface area. What I find works for me is coffee filters. Just fold them up like so. And then you just spread them out. A little bit more like that. There. That's enough. That's just to give the flies extra area to roost and to lay their eggs on. And that's basically it. The only suggestion I would give to anyone doing this is to write the dates on these things so you know exactly when it was made. So in my case, it would be... 717. And if you're keeping multiple species of flies, I would suggest you also initialize, initialing it with a little marker. DM. Trospila melanogaster. And that's pretty much set and ready to go.
As I said, I'm making two of these, one, because just in case one fails, I'm not going to be running out of flies. And two, I'm testing these different lids. One a carbon filter and one with no seam window screening. It's supposed to be able to keep gnats in, so I'm seeing if it can work with just as well with fruit flies. That's basically it. I'm not going to be actually adding the fruit flies in this video because, well, I don't want to be messing around with the fruit flies while I'm indoors. But anyway, this has been my informative video on how to make your own fruit fly cultures. I hope I was helpful and maybe you learned something. Definitely the way to go if you want to keep any sort of small creatures. Like I said, I use them for jumping spiders and for my dart frogs, which I'm going to be getting within the next two weeks, so I need to be prepared. Also works with baby praying mantises. Um, I guess you could also feed them to ants if you crush them up. But they're just a good food stuff, especially... Oh! You could also feed them to fish. That's what you could do with them and tadpoles and anything small, you just sprinkle them up top of the water. But anyway guys, I'm sorry for the break in video. I promise you you did not miss much besides me just adding water to these things and mixing them up a bit. So thank you for watching my video and there'll be more content to come. Please subscribe and like if you enjoyed what you were watching and you guys have a great day. Bye. Yeah, I know I said that I wasn't actually going to show adding the fruit flies to the cultures, but I feel like this is just important, especially if you're trying to do anything with the fruit flies. Take off the tops. Now, when you're trying to work with fruit flies, the best thing that you could possibly do is just make sure that when you're about to open up the lid so you don't lose so many, tap. Get as many as you can on the bottom, open it up, and then knock them in. Oh, good. Chances are you're going to lose some, but it works most of the time. Before this culture completely dies out, I'm going to be there's a good amount in here. Before this culture completely dies out, I'm going to be trying to give them to as many of the creatures as I can, along with knocking the rest of the living ones into the new cultures. But that was just quick to show you exactly how I would go about doing moving the flies from container or tank. Remember, tap, then dunk, and close it up quick. I'm sure you actually saw that I'm sure you actually see me do that in my jumping spider feeding video, assuming that you did watch it. But again, have a great day, guys.